only one who has dreamt of being someone's savior. Something about intervening in petty middle school fights always gave me so much adrenaline. I would always lay awake at night envisioning the scenes and dialogues I would play, or I'd casually be someone's lady knight in shining armor. But despite my years of planning out my heroic moment, it came least where I deemed, and was undoubtedly one of the scariest moments of my life. Many of you may know my two dogs from their trending Instagram account. Their names are Cutie and Pumpkin, and while at first glance you might be tempted to call them crusty little white dogs, that is truthfully a hurtful stereotype towards Shih Tzu's. Um, Cutie and Pumpkin are as small and cute as they are disobedient and stupid. If you tell them to come here, they'll go the other way. If you tell them to sit, they might attack you, but if you tell them to eat, they'll eat. <laughs> So it was a regular day in seventh grade when we were taking the dogs for a car ride to go to the park. We get there and my dad parks on the side of a really busy road. So I'm careful when I'm taking them out so they don't go onto the road. I pick Pumpkin up and immediately she starts wiggling and she's pulling the leash at something but I don't pay attention to it because I'm taking Cutie out of the car. As soon as he hits the ground, I don't feel anything from Pumpkin. So I look over and she's gone. So let's keep in mind that these dogs are like this big and they can run. They can run fast. So immediately I'm filled with panic as I'm looking everywhere for pumpkin, and finally in the distance I see a tiny ball of fur running around in the middle of the busy road. So I throw Cutie's leash and I sprint straight into oncoming traffic, screaming her name. So, uh, screaming her name. The cars can't see pumpkin since she's so small, but they can't see me either because I was pretty small too. So. <laughs> As I'm chasing her, she looks behind me, she looks behind and she sees me running after her. And now she thinks we're playing. So she's like swerving and juking me out and doing these zigzags. And I'm like screaming and crying and waving my arms at drivers because she could get hit at any second. So this, this goes on for what feels like forever. But finally, Pumpkin got tired. And when she gets tired, she likes belly scratch. So now I'm seeing everything in slow motion. There is a huge van coming straight at us at like 30 miles per hour, and Pumpkin is right in front of it, upside down. So what happened next is still blurry in my mind. I just know there was a lot of screaming and crying and honking and barking. Pumpkin is now seven years old, and though I would never want to experience something like this again, I know that I wouldn't hesitate even for a heartbeat to do so. Thankfully, the driver stopped just in time, and I was over Pumpkin on the road. I lifted her up, talked to the driver, and I looked into her big brown eyes, and I gave her a hug, the tightest hug I could give without squeezing her to death. So, I know that some of you might laugh at me thinking that I'm dramatic or that I'm overreacting for crying about my little puppy, but I feel that I'm genuinely at my best when I'm with my dogs, saving their lives or not. What I wouldn't do and what I wouldn't give to see their little wagging tails and receive their wet kisses for the rest of my life, even though I know it's not possible and that their time is short-lived. At a time when I felt I had no human friends to rely on, I knew that they would always be by my side. I risked my life for Pumpkin.